So what I'm doing is really great, and the woman's all like, oh my goodness, that is so noble of you, and, and let me ravage your body before you leave, because this may be the last time I see you. Call it Indie Podcast Theme Song. It's a podcast for comic books. What else would you expect? Welcome to Comic Indie Podcast. My name is Kenneth Javier, and today the book that we are breaking down is Hostage, published by Drawn and Quarterly, written and drawn, and I'm presuming possibly colored by Guy Delisle. So, before we jump into Hostage, I just wanted to share with y'all that Hostage is my first non-fiction comic book that I've read in my entire life. Before Hostage, I didn't even know that non-fiction comic books existed. I was aware that non-fiction books existed, but not non-fiction comic books. So, it's just weird to me, I guess. Normally when you think of comic books, you know, you think about, you know, muscle-bound Superman or big-breasted Wonder Women and, you know, just flexing and, you know, posing and just just being all-out badasses here to save the day. Hostage is not that. I can't really think of any, you know, properties that I've read. Um, you know, I know there's like a Harlem Globetrotters book out there and I know the Harlem Globetrotters exist, but I just don't know that the Harlem Globetrotters we able to go back in time and become roaming gladiators and ride off in chariots and run away from lions. So um, if somebody could help me fact check that one, did the Harlem Globetrotters travel back in time and were they roaming gladiators? I don't think they were, but if you can verify, please leave some comments in the comment section down below. Uh, but definitely an interesting take on a book or use of a book uh, for nonfiction. So Hostage takes the account of a doctor without border, a French doctor by the name of Christophe Andre, who was working in Russia and then was kidnapped and taken to Chechnya in the 1990s. For those of y'all who don't know, Doctors Without Borders is basically an organization that uh, sends doctors to war-torn areas or countries, and basically the doctors do what they do best, is doctor people who don't have access to doctors or, I guess, medical care or psychological care. So definitely, you know, uh, big ups to Dr. Christophe Andre for sharing his talent and his time and sacrificing, you know, his life, really, to uh, help people in need. Or, and, and just hear me, or, it didn't say this in the book, but you could also think it as maybe Dr. Christophe Andre was, you know, just trying to be a dick and he just didn't, you know, want to really doctor first but more pick up ladies before that and maybe he was on a date with like a, a really hot lady that wasn't too impressed with doctors and she's all like, I don't care that you're a doctor, but wait, 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 I'm a doctor without border lady, right? Tomorrow, I'm flying off to Russia and I'm going to do my doctor work on some people who don't have access to doctors. So what I'm doing is really great and the woman's all like, oh my goodness, that is so noble of you and, and let me ravage your body before you leave because this may be the last time I see you. And that could be a narrative for Dr. Christoph Andre, but we don't know that yet. Uh, so, you know, we, we uh, I, I guess we're still checking uh, facts on that one or we're still checking to see if, if that's part of the story. But in any event, we're going to say that Dr. Christoph Andre is uh, fortunate. Obviously, maybe uh, because they were able to take this account of his hostage life, so I'm assuming that he does live. Spoiler alert, I am sorry, but that's just what you get sometimes with nonfiction because it really happened in life. So let's go ahead and jump into the book. Uh, the book uh, of the cover that I got at my local comic shop is consistent of three colors. You get a gray, you get a darker gray, and you get a blue, which also looks kind of gray. So maybe a middle gray, and you have a man handcuffed to a radiator, uh, wearing no shoes, sleeping on possibly a play mat, not quite a yoga mat, but we'll just say it's just a mat in general. So he looks like he is in the hostage position. Before actually I go a little further, I just wanted to kind of let y'all know, I did get introduced to this book on Free Comic Book Day. For those of y'all don't, who don't know what Free Comic Book Day is, it's that one day of the year where um, you know certain comic book shops who participated in give free comic books to the public. Uh, no questions asked. The ones that I went to actually uh, went with uh, Alex A. And uh, we went and we stood in line for a little bit. We walked around in the store and we picked up uh, eight books apiece for uh, us to choose. And when I was picking up my books, I needed to get one last book. And I asked the lady behind the counter and says, hey, 
I only have one book left. What should I get? And she pointed to Hostage. And long story short, here we are on Comic Indie Podcast, breaking down Hostage. So let's jump into it. The book starts off in a very dark place, meaning that it's just dark. You see a room, very dark. You see windows are boarded up. You see a gentleman sitting on this play mat, handcuffed to a radiator, wearing no shoes and no shirt. So no shoes, no shirt, no service. But I'm not really quite sure what service he can get handcuffed to a radiator. Basically, he is just sitting there for, you know, a couple panels and, dare I say, a couple pages. And the story kind of really just takes place in his mind. You know, he's trying to listen uh, to understand what certain creeks uh, are or try to hear what's going on outside. Um, it's completely dark. He doesn't have his, you know, Apple Watch or an iPhone, so he doesn't know what time it is. Uh, so he has to like take these cues of noises and sounds and, oh, okay, this must be this time because I heard this creak or maybe that, you know, sounds like a fat person walking outside and maybe that's that time the person likes to exercise. I don't know. He fantasizes in, in his mind, you know, his escape, how he's going to knock the door down, run down the hallway. You always have to run. And you, when you're in a hostage situation, you always have to run because if you're walking, you're not getting there fast enough. Yeah, he's running, bare shirt, barefoot, and he, you know, wants to get on a plane, get back to his family, laugh, enjoy the cafes, read magazines, sleep on the couch, take naps. But, you know, that world is kind of taken away as we just land right back onto the play mat handcuffed to the radiator. So, don't really have much to do. You want to kind of free your hands. And uh, he starts fiddling with the handcuffs. But, you know, handcuffs do what they do. And they cuff your hands. And if you squeeze them a little bit, they squeeze back at you a little bit tighter. So, he accidentally does a click-click. And now this handcuff is really tight on his left wrist. It's cutting off the circulation, and now it looks like he is in some trouble. So um, I don't know if it's one of those, you know, um, you know, you sit on your hand and your hand goes to sleep type situation. But you know, definitely he's kind of panicking on this one here, trying to figure out, you know, what's going to happen to his hand. And uh, he's also worried about the guards, and maybe the guards might get upset because uh, maybe. Th- you know, they'll look at it as him trying to escape or mess with the cuffs. So he's really scared and kind of paranoid about what's going on. Um, of course, you know, he doesn't make noise. He doesn't call for help. He just kind of continues to massage that hand to make sure that that uh, blood circulation goes in there. So uh, for those of y'all who get handcuffed and you click a little too tight, massage your hand, ensure that blood flow goes into your hand, otherwise you might potentially lose your hand. So definitely lessons learned from the book Hostage here. So um, book kind of closes, or at least this book that I got closes, uh, with you know him sleeping. I guess he kind of passes out. A guard comes in, they undo the handcuffs, they give him a soup, he's there to eat. And, you know, he gets cuffed again, and the lights are out. The lights were never on, but they do show a light bulb where it's obviously not on. So, very interesting close to a book. Again, a different take on a traditional comic. You know, I mean, I know all comics are stories. I know all comics have pictures. But, you know, this one, not a lot of action going on. It's a really just more of a personal narrative of kind of what's going on in the mind. You really stay with uh, Dr. Andre for the entire book until the end to where he gets fed some soup. So, again, I was uh, very intrigued by this book. Let's talk a little bit more about the artist, though, uh, and writer, Guy Delisle. So, uh, I guess, and I don't know if this is a classification, but we're going to call him a travel cartoon uh, is or a travel comic book artist. So, in addition to making a graphic novel about uh, Dr. Christoph Andre's uh, account of being held hostage in Chechnya, uh, he's also done uh, some graphic novels uh, in regards to life in North Korea, some travels through China, through Jerusalem. So, it's kind of like he is like the Anthony Bourdain minus eating food, and he just writes comics and does so. And, and uh, I guess it does so successfully, so very nice for him to kind of throw his book out there on Free Comic Book Day to kind of buzz uh, some more interest or create some more buzz for his books. Guy Delisle, uh, doing it big, traveling the world and writing comic books. Very cool. Well done, Guy Delisle. So let's talk a little bit about uh, more about Dr. Christophe Andre. So Dr. Christophe Andre is a French doctor who was working with Doctors Without Borders in the 1990s, and he was abducted and taken to Chechnya in 1997. Interesting story of his account is that 
you know, he obviously spoke French or a different language other than Chechnyan, and he had no idea what his captors were saying to him. Uh, I'm sure they didn't know what he was saying, or maybe they did. Who knows? Maybe his captors, you know, were really up on their French game, and they were all like, ha, 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 I can understand you, but you can't understand Chechnyan. I don't know what a Chechnyan accent sounds like, so I'm not going to even try. You know, it talks about, you know, just kind of almost his paranoia or his thoughts like what does it mean one day when i get soup with meat what does it mean when i get soup without does it mean that they just ran out or they forgot that they go to the store does it mean that i did something good does it mean that maybe i did something bad when i didn't get meat you know what is going on when they take a picture of me you know they just go in click and then they leave you know is is it for link their facebook wall or, or what you know i think he does know that he is being held hostage otherwise you know they probably would have killed him but then he also even goes into you know thoughts of you know man and I feel really guilty about this because I was here to help people and you know now people are going to have to help me to get out and they're probably going to want millions of dollars and those millions of dollars can go to help people who need the help. So, you know, I'm going to maybe resend my earlier theory that, you know, he was trying to pick up uh, hot ladies in France and use this story to kind of show how compassionate he is. So maybe he is a compassionate doctor. But again, this book is really more about his mindset and, you know, him trying not to go crazy and, you know, potentially escaping. Again, um, not trying to spoil anything, but obviously we do know Dr. Andre is able to be freed how he's freed we don't know that yet until we read more of hostage all right it's time to take hostage to school and let's give this book a grade so uh we grade books based off of art story and originality and art wise you know i was kind of meh with this one now guy delisle um he definitely has a cartoonist type style uh, to it, but you know, I don't think you know his strength is really so much in the art itself, but really just in the retelling or recreating of stories. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. Uh, not a bad score. I'm going to meet you right in the middle, guy. Okay. And story-wise, I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. And the reason why is you know definitely very intrigued. Even though not a lot was going on, and you just saw a man sitting on a mat handcuffed for the majority of the book, I wanted to turn the page to see what happened next. It was very intriguing to just kind of dive into the mind of a hostage and definitely a page turner. Originality wise, I you know it's based off a true story, so I don't know if you can get more original than that. I'm not going to give it a ten, but I will give it a nine. Guy Delisle, we're going to give you a grand average of seven point three 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 three. Or you can just say 7.33 with a line above it, and that will lead you in the C category. And uh, meaning you are Comic Indie certified, so definitely well done, Guy Delisle and Hostage. Uh, if you are interested in getting your own copy of Hostage, I'm sure you can find it on Amazon, possibly eBay, or your local comic book shop. Actually, you know what? Go out to your local comic book shop and request it, because um, definitely you want to support your local comic book shops. Just a few plugs for Comic Indie. Comic Indie is doing some great, big, awesome things here. They had awesome participation in Comic Palooza 2017 in Houston, Texas. Draw Fight Episode 2 is in post production now and will hopefully be released. If you have not checked out Draw Fight Episode 1, check it out here on the YouTube page. Show that will also be coming out, hosted by Alex Ayala, is Cheers to Indie. That is where Alex will sit down with uh, local indie creators to share a beverage, possibly a beer, uh, but definitely sit down in a nice, relaxed situation, do an interview, and talk about what they're promoting and what they want to share to the world. Because as you know, Comic Indie, we're all about promotion. And if you have a project that you're interested in sharing to the world, but you just don't know how, feel free to contact us through our webpage on comicindie.com. For Comic Indie Podcast, my name is Kenneth Javier, and thank you for listening to the Comic Indie Podcast.